What's up, Johnnies? It's Kristen, and we're back for another In and Around Queens segment. Today, we're taking it to the tennis courts. We're here at the USTA Billie Jean King National Tennis Center in Queens. We're going to do an interview, and then we'll see the stadium. Here we go. Everybody. So I'm here with Danny Zausner, the COO of the USTA Tennis Center. Can you just tell us a little more about the facility and about Billie Jean King and her legacy here? Absolutely. So the USTA has been hosting the US Open here at mm -hmm. the National Tennis Center since 1978. Okay. And then in 2006, an opportunity presented itself to go from the USTA Billie Jean King National Tennis Center to put her name on the building. It really kind of indicates how diverse the USTA is. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, this sport is really for everybody. Right. The stuff that Billy's done is since the 60s and 70s is really unbelievable. Not just for women in sports, right. women in society. Mm -hmm. uh, she's been an unbelievable legacy for the sport, for society, and, and a great partner of ours. How many courts are there and what types of programs do you offer here? So we have uh, indoor and outdoor courts. We have 12 indoor courts that okay. we use 365 days a year. And then we've got four stadium courts. In total, there's 49 courts on the entire campus. Wow. During the tournament, we use 16 courts for the match play, mm -hmm. and then all the other courts are used for practice. And a lot of people in the public don't know that 11 months a year we're a public tennis facility, so right. all of those courts get used 6 a.m. to midnight. Colleges, great colleges like St. John's, mm -hmm. practice and play all their matches here, okay. and we use uh, probably about 60 to 70 different schools that practice and play matches at the National Tennis Center. And our programs, tennis programs, which run second the Opens over till the following year when mm -hmm. the Open stops, uh, includes everything. We have summer camps, we've got programs that include young children to senior citizens and everything in between. We're about growing the sport, so it, it's nice to be able to rent out a court to two people who want a court yeah. to play a casual tennis, but we'd much rather put eight, 12 kids on a court learning the sport of tennis at a very young age and then staying with them the rest of their lives. Can you walk us through your 30 plus career? Just tell us a little bit more background about everything that you do here. Absolutely. It's always been about sports and entertainment my entire time. I started out as a concert promoter working for a gentleman named John Shearer. We did a lot of the shows in New York City, mm -hmm. New Jersey, Connecticut and the likes. And then I went into a different field uh, on the other side of the camera kind of where we basically managed sports arenas all over the world. I had about 60 plus arenas and stadiums worldwide. Right. And then in 2001, I had an incredible opportunity to stay close to home mm -hmm. and work here at the home of the U.S. Open, and I've been here ever since. Can you share some knowledge and wisdom for future college students who are looking into a career in sports, how you kind of paved your career path and what they can do? The most important thing I could tell you about a future in sports is you, you make a ton of contacts. You mm -hmm. want to stay in touch with all those contacts. The contacts are as meaningful as anything you could put on your resume in right. terms of how you did in school. You want to do really well in school. Right. But you also want to surround yourself with every aspect of the business that you want to get in. I mean, I was originally in, as a concert promoter, I was selling tickets for living. You, you know, you want to make those grassroots efforts. Mm -hmm. You want to touch and feel every aspect of the business. Here, running the U.S. Open operations for the last 19 years, yeah. there are times when I'll get out on a lawnmower just to interact with the guys doing that stuff, much like how we're trying to figure out what flowers we're planting or the, or the paint colors that we're doing, or anything from selling tickets to the food that we're selling. Mm -hmm. You want to feel a part of every aspect of the operation that you're a part of. Right. So where do you see the Tennis Center in the next five to ten years, and what are some of the goals that you have that you want to achieve for the center? So for us at the Tennis Center, the, the U.S. Open funds our mission on an annual basis. We kind of call it our annual bake sale. Mm -hmm. So for us, we just finished this transformation. We have to make sure that the Open continues to grow. Right. We are a three-week event, and a lot yeah. of people don't even realize that the first yeah. week fan week is free and open to every single person. We do like 15,000 people a day during mm -hmm. that week before the main draw when we get 40 to 50,000 people each day. We're very fortunate that we sell about 99% of our tickets mm -hmm. for the two-week main draw of the tournament. So our big focus right now is our fan week, the seven days leading up to the main draw, and we want to continue to see that grow. Thank you so much for watching another segment of our In and Around Queen series. We've had an awesome day here at the USTA Billie Jean King National Tennis Center in Queens. Now, Johnnies, don't forget to stop by the US Open when it comes around because the first week is free. So we'll see you there. Also, follow them on social media.
If you have any suggestions of places that we should check out next, let us know via social media using hashtag in and around SJU.